we're putting the Obamacare website to the smell test. That's not hard, is it? Uh, Democrats would say that the Affordable Care Act is President Obama's crowning achievement. He promised to pass it and has touted it now for years, yet it seems he was the last to know when there were problems with the Obamacare website. The administration says difficulties were due to technical glitches, but was there also some kind of political agenda? Congressman Darrell Issa is the chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and he's launched an investigation into what went wrong with the website. Joining us now is Congressman Darrell Issa. Congressman, you are the, the man who's doing the oversight, and so you're investigating everything, and they're coming after you for everything. Uh, the question about the Obamacare website fiasco, is it a, is it a question of money and, and how they're, you know, how they fouled this thing up and how much money they've spent to try to get this website working? Is that the concern? No, the concern in this case is that uh, they failed to use best practices. The GAO, General Accountability Office, has nine best practices. They managed to fail all of them, including who was in charge, uh, how they locked in the, uh, the features necessary, uh, last-minute changes, uh, and more importantly, political interference that seemed to put uh, pushing away the, uh, the question people had, which is, how much does it cost and what does it do? And pushing that down into the software at the last minute, less than 30 days out. We believe that this is political meddling, in addition to bad practices all the way through the process. This is a lot of money, but candidly, the government spends a lot of money a lot of times. In this case, it was a program where the Congress tried to warn the president that we weren't ready to go live. A few days out, at a minimum, they were aware that they weren't ready to go live, but they went live anyway. And they went live in a program that now is beginning to embarrass the administration. But it also is pointing out that this administration won't use best practices, uh, even on its most important hallmark legislation. Well, but isn't isn't that the old problem that even that companies even have is that you get a whole bunch of people all trying to give their input, all saying from various agencies of the government, "We want this, I want that, you want this, I want," and and the next thing you know. You've got a mess on your hands, and it's just a matter of, it seems like it's just sheer wasn't managed more than anything else. Well, it was managed by a nurse, a psychologist, and a person with a bachelor's degree in economics. Uh, that's not, and those are the people that should have been understanding what big data does, what was going to be necessary, and what the experience needed to be like. But they did some testing 30 days out and again a few days out, and they knew this was going to fail. So that's bad management not to call a timeout and get it right. More importantly, the American people have to know that their government is going toward doing things right more often. There's been legislation languishing here in the Congress that the president should be supporting that would bring accountability to these kinds of projects, bring common data standards. So there's not just an oversight role, but there's a need for reform. And this is as good a time for the president to recognize that if, he, if he's as mad as I am about the rollout and the failures, then he needs to support real reforms that put teeth into management decisions so this doesn't happen again. Isn't somebody fired for doing this? Well, as you know, nobody in government is fired. And when you have people, again, with nursing degrees, psychologist degrees, and a BA in economics as the people who are most closely attached to this, you're really starting off looking for failure when you don't have, if you will, somebody who's dedicated and experienced working on it. So there were management decisions from, the, from President Obama on down that were made. I'm not in the business of calling for people to be fired with rare exception, but I do want to have change. Uh, we've called for chief information officers, CIOs, to be held accountable, to have budget authority, uh, and to be single point accountability. So when somebody gets a project that could run into the billions of dollars, you know who to go to on a regular basis, and you also hold them accountable not to allow changes in the last few days yeah. of, a, of a development that cause these kinds of problems. So I think for the American people, they want us to fix the uh, Affordable Care website. That's being done, and we're going to work with the administration on that. But then we have to move legislation that really locks in systems to prevent this from having the, happening in the future. Well, doing something wrong a few times is bad. Doing it again and again has to be stopped. The American people don't want this kind of waste. The, the political dichotomy that you have, though, is that you, I don't know how you feel about it, and it's the question is, some Republicans are saying, let's delay Obamacare because we really 
got to get the Obamacare website fixed before you can start holding people mandate. On the other hand, politically, you're kind of going rubbing your hands and going, well, look at this. This is going to be a mess for them. Which side do you fall in? Well, uh, at the end of the enrollment period, the president's going to have to make a tough decision about extending that period to enroll if it continues to not work. My job is much more to oversee the operation of government. So for my committee, what we want to do is oversee getting this fixed and then really work to make sure that the hundreds or thousands of other programs similar that are going on in the government don't suffer the same fate. This one happens to be very visible. I think the president should use this as an opportunity to support legislation to make sure this gets fixed and next one goes on. There's no question there were changes in the Affordable Care Act. There were mistakes made. It was rushed uh, to, you know, to, to uh, government, if you will. Uh, we need to change that. I'm going to work on some of those. I'm proposing changes to the act that might make it work better and certainly try to make it cost less. But while we're doing that, I have an obligation with the administration to fix this website and at least give the American people what they get from most websites they visit. You know, if you don't mind, if you were to type FEHBP, in other words, those are the letters for the Federal Employee Health Care Benefit Plan, into Google, in two strokes, you'd be able to see all the programs that members of Congress, the administration, all the cabinet officers, even the president can sign up for. You'd be able to see how much they cost and how much is being paid for by, as a subsidy by the government. It's a total of three keystrokes after putting in just those yeah. few letters. That's what we should have had for the American people in the Affordable Care Act. It's not rocket science, but it didn't happen. My job is to make sure that it happens every time in the future at that level. All right. Congressman Darrell Issa, you've got, you got a boatload to work on. Thanks so much for joining us. You're most welcome.